Hello friends, welcome to the world of English literature. My name is Amit and today I have with me Arzu who is a research scholar and today we will um, discuss um, this poem called for Anne Gregory by William Butler Yeats which is in your book First Flight um, chapter 10 for class 10. So Arzu we are going to do um, uh, this poem by William Butler Yeats who is uh, one of the foremost writers of um, 20th century, a dramatist, a poet, a prose writer, Nobel Prize winner, pride of Ireland, pride of the whole world, let us say, um, a very philosophical man along with being a poetic man. So um, uh, let us start with a recitation of the poem yeah. for Anne Gregory. Never shall a young man thrown into despair by those great honey colored ramparts at your ear love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. But I can get a hair dye and set such color there, brown or black or carrot, that young men in despair may love me for myself alone and not my yellow hair. I heard an old religious man but yesternight declare that he had found a text to prove that only God, my dear, could love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. Now let us listen to a musical rendition of this poem by this person called um, Steve the Balladier. Never shall a young man thrown into despair by those great honey-colored ramparts at your ear. Love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. get a hair dye and set such color there brown or black or carrot that young man in despair may love me for myself Yesternight declared that he had found a text to prove that only God, my dear, could love you for yourself. That was a lovely rendition of the poem. It really brought out the lyricality of it. What do you think? Uh, indeed, um, Yeats is known to be very lyrical. And in fact, uh, he used to come, keep uh, humming his tunes all day long while um, writing. So that's what many of his friends said later on about um, his renditions. Um, um, so he always had uh, the, it, it in mind as a musical uh, thing, all, mm. his, all his poetry. Um, so, um, let us go over some uh, difficult uh, words in the poem. It is a fairly easy poem with uh, a very uh, lucid sort of vocabulary. 
and which is also the hallmark of a good poet to keep it simple. Um, the best poets keep it simple. But there are a couple of uh, important words over here, which are... Um, rampart is one. Sir, would you like to talk about the word? So rampart is fortification, um, like the walls of the red fort. Um, so the walls around to keep enemies away is rampart. Um, it comes from Latin roots re and imperer. Re, as you have seen with many words, is again. And imperer in Latin is fortify or to take possession of. So to re-fortify or to take possession of something again is the original idea of rampart. And so you take possession of your property by building a wall around it. So here, let us look at those lines. Never shall a young man thrown into despair by those great honey-colored ramparts at your ear. So here, rampart, the hair is being compared to the rampart as if um, the girl, Anne Gregory, um, is the castle mm -hmm. and is protected by her hair, which is the walls of the fortress. Yeah. That is the connotation over here. And so that is an important metaphor to remember. Um, the other word here is despair. Would you like to throw some light upon it? What yeah. do you think despair is? So a very common clarification of despair or meaning of despair is hopelessness, total loss of hope. Despair naturally destroys courage and stops all effort, but may produce a new kind of courage and fierce activity founded upon the sense that there is nothing worse to be feared. In this, despair is akin to desperation, which is an active state and always tends to produce a furious struggle against adverse circumstances, even when the situation is utterly hopeless. Right. Have you ever despaired? I think all our students have as well, and everyone who is alive comes with this curse of despair, sir. Arzu, you've raised a very important point um, of despair and how all of us go through despair in our life, and um, it's a real test of our metal of what our uh, inner strength is and uh, uh, students face this a lot these days because of the stress of um, entrance exams, the stress of peer pressures, the stress of career, and many things and especially during um, this time of COVID having to deal with uh, uh, a lot of online stuff and being isolated and in, being inside the home. It's a very stressful time but that's the point to not despair and um, be aware about mental health and also seek help. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's not a taboo. Um, if one feels anxious or dis depressed, one should reach out to um, one's loved ones or to professionals. Yeah, for sure, yeah. All right, so let's jump into a close reading of the poem. As Sir already explained, the entire poem is in dialogue format. And there are three stanzas where the first and the last stanza are assumed to be spoken by a man and the middle one is considered to be the reply that Anne Gregory has for the man. Let's jump to the first paragraph now. Never shall a young man thrown into despair by those great honey-coloured ramparts at your ear love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. So what it's trying to say is that never shall a young man, so it will never happen that a young man will be thrown into despair because of who you are yourself. So a man's affection towards Anne Gregory, there is a claim here that the affection would only be based upon her outer appearance, only based on her beauty, only based on her golden hair, and not for who she really is, not for her personality. And right in the very first line, we see the word young man come here. So again, the entire poem deals with this heterosexual affection and claims that it is purely based on a superficial level and it does not penetrate deeper into her heart, does not penetrate deeper into her personality. So do you think the word rampart here then signifies a lot more than what we discussed earlier? Definitely does. So if you look at these lines, a young man thrown into despair by those great honey-coloured ramparts at your ear. So it's a whole fortification imagery. So this young man is thrown off a fortress by um, these ramparts which are her yellow colored hair which is hiding her soul so to say and the hair is the rampart from which a young man is thrown into despair because he's hopeless 
is in love with this girl because of her yellow hair um so to say love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair which is the operative part of this um, stanza that the narrator here is saying or people would assume the poet is saying that a young man uh, who falls in love with his a girl with um, um, honey colored yellow hair will not fall in love with her for what she is intrinsically worth but for her outer beauty outward um, appearance that attraction is vital to love is what the message of this first stanza is or what this this person who is speaking the first stanza is saying so he's making a statement that we do not know the intrinsic worth that young men fall in love only for beauty for outward appearance attraction etc so do you think there is an assumption here that this love is purely carnal and not anything beyond that well it is in the romantic tradition um of 19th century where one would not go so far as to say it's it's carnal love because romantic poetry relies a lot on nature imagery uh, celebrating it and so it at least um, uh, poses to be very sweet and uh, connected to natural elements rather than uh, using a word like carnal over here all right yeah. thank you let's look at the next stanza but i can get a hair dye and set such color there brown or black or carrot that young men in despair may love me for myself alone and not my yellow hair so that is ann gregory's reply to this person's claim that anyone who loves you would only love you for your beauty and not for your heart and so she questions that my beauty is transient perhaps or my beauty is something that can be changed so what if i change my hair color what if i put hair dye change my yellow hair into brown or black or carrot and what then would these men still love me or could this perhaps be a test to see who really loves me for my heart and who loves me for my yellow hair so there is this sort of challenge to this assumption that what if i change my hair what if i'm able to exercise my agency by changing this one part about me yeah and um, it's, it's a metaphor for much deeper things it's a metaphor for um, racism if instead of the hair color it's body color then you can see brown or black or carrot if the girl was from a different race if she was afro american or if she was um from the near east or far east how would the perception change how we build how racism has been so ingrained uh, in our social lives for a very very long time yeah. so here instead of here think about other things body color i'll tell you a very interesting um novel um by wilkie collins who's a very famous um, novelist in 19th century so in one of his um, uh, novels uh, there is a plot in which um, there is a young uh, handsome british man and his british girlfriend both white people and then uh, the man goes through um some disease the girl is blind by the way hmm uh, so she has never seen him but they are in love so the man has to go through a mercury treatment in which he turns black and the girl breaks up with him she does not know she is blind from birth she does not know what black or white is but she falls out of love with him when she hears that he is no longer white and he is black so that's precisely the point that ann gregory is making over here what if my hair color was brown or black or carrot would these men still love me um will they love me for myself alone and not my yellow hair so do men care for intrinsic worth for the person i am or do they just care about the outward experience so it it is a protest by ann gregory it it is a protest of a woman against this this idea of love that has been framed by men by patriarchy for many centuries it's very interesting sir how different colors could mean a lot more than just the hair color here and how black and brown and yellow could be symbols for something that goes much beyond just her hair color and it's also interesting that yeats is also considered to be a post colonial writer considering that he did write about the british invasion in ireland and he did comment 
about the entire politics of British colonialism and British influence on Ireland. Of course, their race is more homogenous to say than in other areas. But what do you? How do you think that affects our reading of the poem, Yeats as a post-colonial commentator? It's very important because Ireland um, um, fought against England uh, for freedom, and Yeats was also an Irish nationalist. So that that's a little bit background about Yeats. Um, his girlfriend or his love interest, Maud Gon, um, was an active politician, and she would not. Um, agree to his proposal for marriage because he was not an active politician so to say but of course he was highly influenced by by the movement and he understood what colonialism is and colonialism is the rule of one country over another like british rule over india and similarly the british rule over irish people also the rule of white people over white people but you can see the nuances over here the finer point over here with the brown and black in the carrot hair because as you have seen in Hollywood films as well, it is the blonde hair which is um, uh, preferred for uh, uh, the stars, for the heroines. And in fact, you would be very um, interested to learn, Azu, that there is a big hair industry that runs in the world, a uh, hair industry of wigs, where Afro-American women in America wear uh, wigs of straight hair because they would not mm. get employment if they have frizzy hair or wild hair and things like that. And so these wigs come very costly. And so hair is more than just uh, uh, an innocent metaphor like uh, we are looking at and th at this poem. Yeah, so I think it really impacts your acceptance as a woman, the beauty standards that the world subjects you to and how you have to either take a stand for yourself and rebel against all of that or perhaps conform to all of this in hope for acceptance, in hope for love. And how Anne Gregory here is questioning that conformity. Anne Gregory here is taking a stand that what if I change my outer beauty? What if I don't conform to the beauty standards? Which is also interesting considering you brought up Maud Gon and how she was also a figure of rebellion. She was also this female figure who wanted to question the society, who wanted to not conform, who wanted to rebel. And in this stanza, I could almost hear Maud Gon speak through Anne Gregory. Definitely. Um, Yeats proposed three times to Maud Gon, and he was rejected all three times. I'm interested in all. But this also tying into the whole question of racism, etc., is very relevant, um, um, students and friends, uh, to think about the issue of racism, how deeply ingrained it is in our society how we endorse beauty products, fairness creams, how our superstars have endorsed uh, fairness creams um, because it is ingrained in our psyche that uh, fair is better, which is a very unfair assumption. And so we have to be very aware of these um, issues. However, let's move to the third stanza now. I heard an old religious man by yesternight declare that he had found a text to prove that only God, my dear, could love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. So here the narrator of the poem um, brings in another a third party. So this is a third character. Actually, there are four characters. The young man who falls in love with a girl, mm -hmm. the girl who replies, this religious man who finds a text to prove something, but above all these is the narrator who may not be the man in the first stanza. So this is also something while reading, in future also with other texts, do not, uh, friends, confuse the writer with the narrator. The person who is speaking in the text is necessarily not the writer. So these views may or may not be of William Butler Yeats which is further uh, distanced by in including another character now, this religious old man. So let's go over this stanza. I heard an old religious man, but yesterday night declare that he had found a text to prove that only God my dear. So the narrator is talking about an old religious man who yesterday night found some text and he declared that only God could love you for yourself alone, addressing the girl. And Gregory. So it is not in human capability to love you for yourself alone, for your qualities alone. Human beings, the men who are falling in despair, 
will fall in despair because of your eyes, your hair, because of your smile or some other quality. It is not within human understanding to not be attracted and love. That is the point that the old man is making and he says that he has found a text, a religious text to prove this point. So eventually tying up these three paragraphs, we see that in the first one, uh, the narrator, the speaker of the first stanza says that a young man cannot help but falling in love with this girl's yellow hair. So it's also very romantic in nature, very sweet, but at the same time also making a point that um, how can one not fall in love with that, those beautiful yellow hair um, and you yourself alone. The second stanza, the girl protests that um, she does not like this idea. Uh, what if her hair color was different? What if she had different physical attributes? Would that be a disadvantage? And in the third stanza, we see the narrator quoting a religious man from a text. So it is three times removed. There's a writer, there's a narrator, there's a religious man who's read in a book and declaring. So this is how also information or ideas are carried forward or diluted. And in that text, it is said, that uh, it is only in God's ability to love someone for what they are, to love selflessly um, without any strings attached um, and which is why the poet here says could love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. So that is roughly the poem that only God can love human beings for what they are. Human beings love human beings with some conditions and this is at the heart of the debate of this poem. So in the last two lines, the poet says, could love you for yourself alone and not your yellow hair. So it's only within God's ability to love people for what they are, for their intrinsic ability, selflessly, not for humans to do that because humans work through comparisons with each other. Thanks a lot for being with us. Thank you, Arjun. Thank you.